Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Yang ini adalah untuk kod ECO415. Jadi pastikan uh, anda melihat PowerPoint slide mengikut subjek anda masing-masing. Okay? Jadi saya akan berbual description kat situ untuk kod apa supaya korang semua tak tiru. Okay, jadi uh, we are going to, this is market structures for ECO415 is the economics. Eh? Last for microeconomics and then we go through with the macroeconomics. Okay, so uh, why this market structure is important to be discussed? Okay, because of these market structures will affect the market outcome through its impacts on the motivations and opportunities and decisions of economic actors participate in the market okay and it's attempt to explain and predict what is a market outcomes through the extents of market competitions all right so definitions of market structures is a classification of systems for the key traits of a market including the numbers of firms the similarities of the product they sales and the ease of entry into and exit from the market. All right. So we have four types of market structures. This is one of the uh, main market structures. The first one is of perfect competitions. Okay. So for every types of market structures, they have uh, their own uh, characteristics. Okay, they, they have their own characteristics. So make sure that to make it more simple and to make a comparison, okay, between these four market structures, maybe you can make it uh, in the table. Okay, summaries of uh, market structures. Okay, the first one is a perfect competition. What is the characteristic of perfect competition? Okay, the first one is, um, of course, it's a large number or small firms. It's a small firms, but they have a large number. So each firm is so small relative to the total market. That's no single firm. This is not single firms like monopoly, but they can influence the market price. Okay. So the second one is a homogeneous product. What is a homogeneous? It means that it will sell the same product in the market. It's the same. Okay, buyers are indifferent as uh, to which seller's product they buy. Okay, the third one, all right, so this is very famous for their own characteristic for perfect competition. It's a very easy to entry and exist from the market. Okay, required the resources be completely mobile to freely enter or exist the market. All right, so we have short run and long run profit maximization schedule. All right, so we have P, we have Q, we have TR. So to, to find the TR, we have times P as a price of product and the Q as a units of quantity of output. And so that is a total revenue. So when we get the total revenue, we have the average revenue and we also have the MR. It's a marginal revenue. Okay. Alright, so uh, this is the first figure to show the profit maximizing for the perfectly competitive. If you see that, uh, it's a price taker. So when we call it a price taker, it means that the formula is a P equal to ER equal to MR. So P equal to MR. Alright, so the formula for profit maximization actually is uh, MR equal to MC because in this case for perfect competition is a price taker. So P equal to MR. So automatically the formula is not MR equal to MC anymore, but it's a P equal to MC only for perfect competitions. Okay, so this is the graph for perfect competition. Okay, right. So we have average variable cost. We have MC. So when the price intersect with the MC, so that is the price for perfect competition and the quantity for perfect competitions. Okay. As I said, that is a price taker, a seller that has no control over the price of the product it sells. It was determined by the market. Okay, so we just accept what the, the price of market are. 
So that's why P equal to MR equal to ER and equal to D. Okay. And then, okay, this is how, okay, uh, to create the perfect competition. So uh, if you see the market and the firms, so the market, okay, when the intersection between demand and supply, so there, there is a one price. Because of the perfect competition is a price taker so we have to take the p1 so our price now is a p1 for perfect competitions okay it's not same with the monopoly because monopoly is a single firm so they can determine the price so there is the price maker okay this is what we call as a uh, it's a it's a maximization condition it's a mr equal to mc and profit to get the profit we have to minus tr minus tc it's a total revenue minus total cost and there's a three types okay of profit that will be earned by these four types of market structures okay the first one is a supernormal profit supernormal profit is a when your tr is more than tc okay next is a subnormal profit it's a subnormal when your tr is less than your tc it means your cost of production is more than your total revenue. Then this is not a good condition. And the last one is a normal profit. Normal profit sometimes we can call as a break-even point. It means that um, uh, your total revenue is equal to your total cost. So you don't earn any extras of profit. <laughs> so... Uh, the first figure is the firms with profit and the second figure is the firms with loss. Okay, so uh, we have profits when, uh, okay, at first you have to make the intersection between P equal to MC. So P intersect with the MC, so that is a price and quantity. And then you have to draw your ATC, it's the average total cost. So if your your curve of average total cost is below than your price, it means that your total revenue is more than your cost. So we'll, you will earn a super normal profit. But in this other case for B, it's a firm with losses. Okay, it means that if you see your price times quantity is less than your ATC times Q. Okay, so ATC, MC, all right? So this is long run. Okay, if short run, so we have short run AC. If it's a long run, it's a long run AC. So it means that your P equal to LRAC. Okay, so that is a graph. Okay, next. Next is a monopoly. Okay, monopoly means it's a single seller. It's not the same with the perfect competition, which is uh, they have a small firm, but it's a large firm. Okay, so one firm provides the total supplies of a product in a given market. So it means that there is uh, the, only, uh, the only company or the only market that can produce that product. So that's why they can control the price. Okay, and of course, they have to produce a unique product. No close substitute for other products. Okay, let's say they can produce only product A. So there is no company can duplicate or can copy um, their product because it's a unique product. And uh, it's not seen with the perfect competition. With, uh, it's easy to entry and exit, but it's impossible to entry because you need some, you know, there is a limitation there. It's a copyright terms and so on. It's impossible to entry. Sometimes you need a very high capital to be a monopoly. Okay, so this is your curve. Okay, if we make a comparison between competitive firms and demand and the monopoly demand curve, right? So uh, this is a uh, example monopoly total average. So from this from these numbers, okay, we can create a curve. Okay, um, we see that there is a barrier to enter as a monopoly. So what is the barriers? Major barriers. Ownership of a vital resources. Okay, so control. So mean you, the only owner that control the resources. No other company. So um, of the entire supplies of strategy input is the one way of a monopolist can prevent 
they can prevent from the newcomer from the entering an industry. So the second one is the legal barriers. Okay, result from the government which is um, to open that company to produce that product. You have license and franchise and so on. So the last one is the economy of scale. You need a big skill to be a monopoly because you the only single seller. Okay. So this is a trough uh, for monopoly. Okay, we have MR and demand because you are the controller. You are the price maker. Okay, if you see there is the monopoly price, perfectly competitive price if you are price taker. So it quite be different. Okay. So this is, uh, as I said, that is a price maker. Price maker means a firm that face a, a downward sloping. Okay. The demand was downward sloping. Demand curve. And therefore, it can choose among price and output combinations along the demand curve. Okay. They can choose the highest price in the market because the, the only single seller that can produce that product. They can control the market. So this is how the profit maximizing price and quantities of outputs. Okay. So uh, the formula is you have to put MR equal to MC. Okay. So in this case, the price not only uh, in the MC one, but you can get the highest in the demand curve is a P one okay profit maximizing price is the highest price per unit at which q1 can be sold okay this is a graph where the monopoly profits and loses okay okay uh, what's so special about the monopoly? Monopoly, they have a price discrimination. Okay, the price discrimination occur when the seller charge different prices for the, for the different people but in the same product. Okay, so three conditions. And we, you, you have to make sure your demand curve was downward sloping. Okay, was downward sloping. And then buyers, you have buyers but in the different market. So must have difference. Okay, difference market and different price elasticity one types of price elasticity is elastic another types of elasticity is more elastic or inelastic so we cannot get the result of same elasticity so if you have the same elasticity you cannot do a price discriminations and the monopoly cannot be happen okay and then the buyers must be prevented from the reselling the product at higher price and you have to make sure that this buyer cannot sell your goods because there is um you know copyright uh, and the license to produce or to to sell that product in the market what is a monopoly disadvantage a number um, a monopoly charges a highest price and they can produce less output than a perfect competitive terms so this is disadvantage and the resource allocation is inefficient because monopolies produce less than if the competition exists and monopoly uh, produce higher long-run profit than its uh, competitions exist and monopoly transfer income from consumer to producer to a great degree than under the perfect competitions okay this is how you make a comparison between the competitions and the monopoly. What is a monopolistic competition? Monopolistic competition actually is a combination between perfect competitions and monopoly. So it's a quite a large number of firms and it's an independence and it's a freedoms of entry. Okay, it's not easy an entry to exist and it's uh, the 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 uh, freedom of entry it's more to like a uh, monopoly and they have product differentiate still the same for short run and long run so they have mr equal to mc okay lr equilibrium is um rich when only normal profit remain where there is no further incentive for new firms to enter
actually the curve it's same with the monopoly not perfect competition okay because of it's look like the that is a price maker okay can charge the highest price okay by ps to produce the qs okay in your average cost lower than your price or your revenue okay your cost is referred to the ACS times with QS this is long run equilibrium so of course you have to types with the LREC and LRMC okay So this is a non-price competition. To measure elements is product development and advertising. Non-price competition is a competition in terms of product promotions like advertising, packaging, or any extras of product developments. Okay, the last one is oligopoly. Okay, oligopoly, uh, something that can we see that is so special like monopoly. It has barriers to entries. The size of barriers varies from industry to industry, and in some cases, entry is relatively easy, where it, in other, it's uh, virtually impossible. Interdependence of the firms, because the, the, there is an assumption there. There are only a few firms under oligopoly. Okay? Each has to take uh, accounts of the others, and they are mutually dependent. Competition and collusion in oligopoly where oligopolies agree okay whether it's a formally or informally to limit the competition uh, between themselves so they may say uh they they may uh, set the output quota it's a quota and then it's a fixed price can set eh? it's a limit product promotions or developments or maybe they can agree not to push each uh others in market and then what is the non collusive oligopoly who is the Oligopoly has no agreement between themselves, formal, informal, or tested. Okay, the equilibrium of the industry and the collusive oligopoly, uh, let's say cartel. Okay, we have three theories. We have cartel, we have price leaderships, and the last one is a keen demand theory, or there is a keen demand curve. So the theory that oligopolies face um, a demand curve that is a keen at the current price. So demand being a significantly more elastic about the current price than below. And the effect of this to, to create a situation of price stability. This is what we call as a price leaderships. Okay. There's a supply or others firms and we depends on the demand cats. So uh wait, huh? This is when uh, there is a quota, okay? Limitations of the amounts that can produce, let's say 200, 600, okay? They can control the, the, the amount. Okay, that's all uh, for the market structures that you have to know. And after this, we can continue for the macroeconomic topic for ECO 415. And I hope that um, uh, we can make uh, some uh, Q and A in the WhatsApp discussions, okay? Or maybe you can search uh, in uh, any kinds of you know materials. Then uh, make sure that uh, you can get some ideas about what is the market structures are, okay? So uh, thank you very much because for listening my YouTube channels. Okay, alright. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.